Well, everyone, welcome to our monthly podcast with the one and only Mr. Derek Johnson, which we're honored to have He's coming to us from the road at this busy and pivotal season and time in the nation's history that we find ourselves. And we're going to be asking him all the uh, down, and, uh, down and dirty, nitty gritty questions that all of you are looking to get pivotal answers for at this time. So before we do, if you're new to the podcast, please do like, subscribe and share and smash that like button so it can get shared by yourself and others. As you know, Derek is a patriot. He is a, a decorated military a veteran for the Army. Uh, he is a singer, songwriter, producer and engineer, amongst other things, and has a couple of uh, books he's written as well about laws and order, which we will um, promote towards the end of the podcast that he'll talk about. And uh, he's just a, a man of many, many talents using his humble gifts for the Lord and for the benefits of God's country in America. Uh, Derek, welcome to the podcast. Good, sir. How are you doing today? I'm um, just getting my getting my phone set here a little better for, for people. Uh, yeah, I'm on the road, so I'm, some, I'm somewhere in Mississippi. I have no idea where I am, actually. Uh, so, anyway. That's, well, you're where God needs you to be, and I like the shirt, by the way. It's, it's really cool. Um, uh, yeah. So, the, the, new the, one. yeah, yeah. I might have to get one from, get one of those from you here shortly. Uh, so the, the first question, I would say probably the main underscoring question, Derek, right now, you know, we're, we're about 30 days from the election. If we have one, um, as best as you can for the people, as you always do, based on your experience, based on the laws and orders, based on everything that you're seeing coming down the pike, all of that intertwined, um, what do you what do you see as far as if we did have an election? Do you think the military will intervene? And what, what do you think is really going on here as you look at the situation now from a myopic point of view? Well, you know, the, the first things, I mean, uh, I'm, you know, when people hear decorated, I'm not as decorated as I think I am. I got a few medals. When people hear expert and all that thing, I, you know, I'm, I'm just a guy who reads and studies what I'm passionate about. Um, but, you know, it, there's like this hard, I don't know what it is. It's, it's, it's so hard for me from the standpoint of mixing my personality with also my love, but also the passion for people to go, hey, you know, I, people ask me, well, how is it and why is it that I'm the one? And I'm like, well, because it's not you. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but saying that, look, I mean, somebody, Moses, someone had to be Moses. Someone had to be the people who didn't know how to get out of the wilderness. There, there, There's always these things in life. This guy right here took this on. He was called at this appointed time where he was in his life to be that role. I'm where I am for my role. My role is to show you what that dash is. And to eliminate all the noise and clutter in your life. Now, only you can follow up with doing that. So I will give you the tools and you take the action. And if you don't take that action, you're just going to end up with still clutter and noise and things like that. Like that 18 wheeler rolling down the road behind me causing all this distraction. All right. Got to block it out. So everybody's watching a special operation. That's what that dash is. That's a military operation. It's a dash. This this combination, ladies and gentlemen, came out on his ball cap April 2023. So when you do your math there and you apply that, make that apl applicable to your brain, that means he's claiming I'm 45, 46, and I'm already 47 a year and six months before, no, actually a year and seven months before the actual election whether it is or not one, it doesn't matter. He's already claiming I'm number 47 already on all of his apparel. So he's either one of two things, and it's not an and or. He's either this or he's this. He's either the most cockiest, egotistical SOB on the planet, or he is a commander in chief because that dash represents military. I just happen to be the one that God chose for me to see all the connections. And I got a, a macro mind and a micro mind. You're watching a special operation. So like the assassination thing, I've already proven that out. I've already proven. I've already, I, I gave everybody the nuggets and here they are. And I just found the key nugget last week that solves everything. And now people who jump ship are coming back. 
So once you have that massive key nugget, then everything else around it fills in. So what everybody's watching in North Carolina, there's tragedy with war, ladies and gentlemen. I can't stop that. We've had tragedy, though, for so long, for so many years. My attitude goes back to where have you been all these years? Not beating you up, but where have you been? Because we've lost millions of soldiers in this nation for foreign oil wars that were called for by career politicians. So here we are. We're in a final stage of an operation. This is your, when President Trump said way back, there's a storm coming, wait for it. You're in that. And he just said the other day, he said, we may have one real bad, bad day. Now, I don't think he meant that meaning a singularity. I don't think he meant just a bad day. I think he meant there's a time period, and I know he meant that there's a time period. We're going to have some rough, 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 rough days. And he said it. I, I wish I could remember the speech. I'm, I, they all, he says so much, and he has so many speeches, but he said that. And then he also said not long ago, we're about to enter some rough days ahead, but we're going to come out on the end. So it, that's what he's talking about, all this stuff you're seeing. But it's all in one diagram, in one publication by the United States Special Operations Command. You get on Google, go ahead. I, people told me the other day, why are you still use Google? I said, let them know you know, right? If you still think that some bad person's in control of Google, let them know you know that you know what to look up and you know you're on track. So you go to Google, type in 2016 Special Operations Command, comma, unconventional warfare, enter. That PDF that pulls up is a dot .mil, official military, it was put out by the Special Operations Command, not an author, but the whole command put that out. Guess what the Special Warfare Center is called, ladies and gentlemen, and guess where it is? North Carolina. And guess mm -hmm. who it's named after? John F. Kennedy, Special Warfare School. All right, wow. so these aren't all coincidences. You go in there and look at page 11. There's a diagram in there, and that diagram is outlining everything to a T right now. Right now, the assassination's on there. It says assassination, forming public opinion, advocating national cause, and it is uh, creating a distrust in public institutions. There's your answer right there. What did they do to you? They made you get mad about Secret Service. They made you get mad about the FBI. Now, President Trump is hammering FEMA and all these people. And he's also hammering Biden, even though I know it's not real, but I'm showing you the special operation. They handed out $750 checks for million-dollar problems, right? Well, guess what? Sabotage and terror to display distrust in government. It's all on the Special Operations Command. Little bitty paragraph. It's not a, Of course, it's not a paragraph, a bunch of paragraphs, but a, a diagram. So that is all leading up to the military's been in control of our elections. All you got to do is go to nationalguard.mil. Go to Google again, type in um, elections, comma, National Guard, dot mil, 2018, 2020, and 2022, the National Guard have been out at different precincts. They've been in control of it. And then Executive Order 13848 with the National Emergency that President Trump signed and declared September the 12th, 2018. You got to do your math. See, a lot of people hear that, but they're not applying the math and the timeline of these things, which is important to study. That was signed two months before any election under him, and he declared a national emergency. So that means the only evidence of election fraud or election interference of any kind they would have had in order to, hey, let's write an executive order and declare a national emergency was 2016 and prior. And then all of a sudden, 2024, the same swing states of 2020 or the same swing states of 2024. Ladies and gentlemen, when you understand what a swing state is, then you would understand a little bit about gambling. You wouldn't have the same swing states this year as you did four years ago because the swing states were established whenever people died or they were ready to get someone out or the, the little man started creating a ruckus in town or the little woman and then – the swamp said, hey, we got to we gotta make sure we get this spot right here, this on a local level, this on a state level, this on a federal. We got to make sure we get in there and do what? Disrupt that election. That's where swing states came from because they're all predetermined. How did, how did they know? 
how did they know what states were going to be determination factors of the election before the election, right? You can guess and you can do it, but it shows that it's not your, hey, free, fair, reciprocal election, where if John and I were going to run against each other in the old school days, they would give everybody a black ball and a white ball, and there was a little box up front. All right, and everybody saw that box. It was right for everybody. And John presents his speech in front of the, the town, and I, I present mine. And may the best man win, and you shook hands. And then people did what? They walked up there, they put the little ball in the box, right? And then at the end, they opened the box up. No one, the box didn't go away. It didn't go hide in the back somewhere. They opened the box up, and they go, well, looks like John won this thing, all right? So, you know, I guess people just love traditional names like John. They don't like a name like Derek. They just don't trust a Derek, so they got to have a John. Right. John's the winner. And and that was it. So if you apply the timeline and then you, you know, I tell people you can get mad, bitter, frustrated, sad, angry, groan, whine, complain, kick, cuss, sputter, argue. You can do anything you want to do, but that dash is still there and it ain't going anywhere. If you love this man, you would do him an injustice by not seeking to understand that dash versus. The alternative, because this don't go away, and that's what makes him the most special person face of this whole operation. But that also is the United States military. Uh, so I tell people, you can't support that without supporting the man and the military. Um, and there's a plan in place. Um, and I mean, that's why the book is the number one bestseller. But I, it wasn't because I wrote or passed these laws. It's just because I know how to take and siphon out all the economy stuff that other people talk about and that's their wheelhouse but what matters right now the most is the military because men and women are and have died for it along the way uh, so it is you know i take my hat off uh for all the tragedies i don't say that lightly uh but we are finally th this this whole thing is the eradication as much as possible of the swamp the deep state all the bad guys, that's why you're seeing all these entertainers go down, Diddy, and all, all this stuff all ties in together. And so, unfortunately, there are going to be casualties. But as you got to listen to President Trump. There's going to be some bad days. We're going into a rough period, but there's going to be a light at the end of the tunnel. And everybody needs to hang on to that versus get mad at the veteran for telling you what's going on. I'm not a podcaster. People think of me as a podcaster now because I do podcasts. But I'm still the retired veteran just saying, hey, this is a special operation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank you again. As always, we really deeply value what you bring to the table on many fronts, um, <clears throat> uh, Derek. And, and again, you know, God gives us different talents and expects them to use them. And, and we tip our cap to you that you've used yours in a variety of capacities to help God's giving people. So thank you for that. And to the men and women who have sacrificed so much past, present, and future, to your point. Um, so one of the great things why we love to do with you, as you know, because this is a, a trusted and safe place for both of us, respectively, is kind of delve into sort of the deeper waters that that either many will go or, or maybe afraid to go to or don't know how to. And, and you can help uh, separate fact from fiction. One of those is you brought up North Carolina. Um, as we've been delving into that, nothing is as it seems. And we're, we're clearly at a season, Derek, of a changing of the guard, as you know, on many fronts. Deaths, resignations, you mentioned Diddy. We know our music entertainment industry is, both of us are going through some major wholesale changes, which is a good thing. We see Justin Bieber switching over to be a Christian artist now and a worship leader, which is very encouraging because we know God doesn't give up on any of his people as long as you know, we make our, do, as you said, do our part and, and reach back out and, and, and can join with him. So all that is to, to ask you, uh, it's been our understanding, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that there have been, uh, th there's been a sleight of hand with, I mean, obviously there's tragedies in North Carolina with the flooding. We know that they targeted red states. That wasn't a coincidence. Deep states on their way out. They're trying to hurt as many people as possible. There's also understanding that there's some uh, underground activity of tunnels of, of removal of children and, and rescue missions going on under the, the other side of it. Can you kind of touch on that a little bit? Well, yeah, I mean, that's the, that is the main thing. Um, now, once again, I, I mean, where we are now, when you look back June the 16th, 2015, President Trump rolls down the escalator, 
where everything was really haywire or real chaos with the real deep state was back then you know so i'm not the guy and i you know and i'm of course i never name names anyway so they can just kind of know who they are and who they ain't but when people are saying the black hats are doing this and then the white hats are doing that uh, out there uh because there's there's so much visuals of this is we're in the straight up special operation part now of other things uh so you know you're always you can't eradicate evil anyway but you can suppress it but like all the tunnel things over here in North Carolina, everybody's talking about the lithium and stuff. That is the thing to focus on, but then you got to also focus on it the right way, in my opinion. Uh, and that's with the United States military. Through any kind of subterranean conflict, they do use water to flush out tunnels. It depends on what it is, what's in there, what's bad, et cetera. Um, the thing you got to look at is the last time that Asheville looked like that was in 1916. Uh, so the odds that ain't there first off of a of a flood and it's also you got to know that region that region is very hilly the last time i went through there was on a tour bus talking about music and i mean i got so sick i, I needed some dreaming man just about because on the back of the bus when you're in a bunk uh you know it's so hilly there and when you're going through when you leave tennessee and you're going over to to north carolina you i mean you going through the smokies I mean, it's almost like a spiral in some of those areas. So we're talking about hill hills. Uh, to see that kind of flooding, then you pair where where people really struggle, and I and I know this is tough. I mean, it, but there ain't any other way but to nip it and try to talk about it. Is when you hear people talk about FEMA camps, then you hear people talking about, well, COVID was this, and you hear people talking about. Uh, 30 you hear people talking about all those things that yes were the plan of evil way back here way back you still have to understand that that you can overtake those and flip those all right but then use them for your good in a special operation meaning well they were all going to do this but we can use it and flip it and this would be our moment to clean out every facet and every layer that's going to be hard for people who don't seek to study what I talk about in depthly on special operations, because there's multiple layers of unconventional warfare, which uncon unconventional warfare is like the word vaccine. It means it's the catalyst. It's like the big shell. Then you got to get deep down and go digging into asymmetrical warfare. You got to get into subterranean warfare. You got to get into guerrilla warfare. Then you got to understand those. And like I posted on my page last night, it ain't about being right or wrong, which a lot of people operate with. It's about opening your mind to think all perspectives and possibilities because with enemy, they do what they got to do to survive. All right. And they'll do whatever they got to do and they'll read things. They'll, so you got to think of every little entity. Well, most Americans don't operate that way. They want to right and wrong and then they want to yes or no and they don't want to hear the full detail. But for me, I can't explain any other way because when you know that you know and then you know that you can see the full big picture, North Carolina had flooded in since 1916. It's very hilly. And then also we know there are most certainly, you can Google it, It's we have weather patents that can manipulate storms. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, if you're flipping an agenda, that would align with what President Trump said. We're going to have some bad days. There's going to be a, a glory side, a renaissance period, meaning a rebirth. We're about to enter some rough days, but we're headed here. He's telling you things are going to be rough a little while. But he's also not alarming you from the standpoint where you'll panic, go, you know, because that'll make things worse. So he's already telling you that. So that means to me that they, they use the technology that is there, but then also to flip that and get that tunnel out. Just like, here's a great example. I don't know who put the video out, but someone in North Carolina showed this helicopter trying to land and it looked like it was trying to land on the supplies and it was blowing the supplies everywhere. Well, then all of a sudden, 
right before that, all the videos were about where is the National Guard? Where is the military? Why aren't the military coming to help? And then people started flipping on the military going, oh, our military's against us, yada, yada, yada. Well, then this helicopter tries to land. Now there's people, that video has gone viral. Look what this military, who was that? What military was that? Look what they did. Destroy it. You know, things were blowing everywhere and supplies. So the very people who cry wolf, yell wolf, won't help, all of a sudden do stuff like that. Some of that is by design, but also what people can't think about this, when you come out from a tunnel, guess what rats do? These guys are skilled. They're not dumb rats, the ones that they're smoking out of these tunnels, because they've been doing this for years. So what do those rats do? What's that saying we talk about? What's the Bible talk about? Wolves in sheep's clothing? Mm -hmm. Then they blend in with all the people out there in the ground trying to help. All of a sudden, they've spoken out. So that helicopter guy, I'm just thinking outside the box. It may end up not being that, but this is how you think outside the box, knowing it's an operation. That helicopter could be looking for what they're looking for, all right, looking for the rats that they smoked out that are trying to blend in now with all the people helping because they're good at doing that. It's easy to go, oh, where can I help? How can I help you? It's easy to do that. So what helps you understand that that little increment of time of North Carolina, even though there's tragedies, yes, but this that little increment sliver of time in history is to understand what's all been around it. There's so much evidence around it to show that it's all part of that. So, you know, there will be disclosure somewhere. I don't know when it's going to be. I don't know how they're going to do it. But there will be disclosure in history. But this is one of those where I tell people, same thing, like I'm sure we might talk about it, but same thing with the election. It's a real simple answer. We get to November the 5th. If there's an election in your town, if they got the bo booths open, I'm pretty sure if you're a patriot, you're going to be there. But if you wake up that day and you go down there and everything's closed and the doors ain't open and no, no you know, vehicles in the parking lot, of your place where you've always gone to vote and it's always been open on voting day, I'm pretty sure you're going to have your answer that day because that would mean you've never seen that before in your life. There's mm. going to be some kind of public disclosure. So all of this will also have that somewhere down the road when people, when they feel people are ready to accept what, what that means on their level. I'm the guy that can be, yeah, I can help you right now if you'll get your mind in that. But what people have done is they let emotions and fear and then also their love for President Trump stand in the way. I love him. I mean, I wouldn't be wearing a shirt around the country and go, going, in, you know, hanging out down there. But you let your emotions stand in the way of, of what that is by operational standards. And, you know, people, the same people. A lot of these same people are the ones, drain that swamp, drain that swamp. You're watching the swamp being drained, and it wasn't going to be easy. It was going to come with a little bit of rough patches and a little bit. I had an old buddy the other day. I saw him first time in I don't know how long, and he, he's a hit songwriter. And he says, the highs are highs and the lows are lows. But, you know, you always find a way. And that's what President Trump's talking about. And, and that whole North Carolina is – an operation with multi-layered and there will be disclosure somewhere and i don't know when it's going to come but there will be disclosure because people die so when people die same thing with military there's got to be disclosure for that because the public's going to do what demand that so they're going to do that but everybody can see to understand what it is more clearly with that versus all the alternatives and then also i'm not a fear guy the military don't work on fear. There's a huge difference in you being scared of what you think you're seeing versus the military is not doing this to scare you. We don't work like that. So there's mm -hmm. a lot of people out there. There's a lot of podcasts are still just fear mongering, fear mongering, fear mongering. That ain't what this is about. It's rough some days. Yes. There are some bad days. Yes. Because it's an operation. But it's that the operation wasn't the scare the ever living crap out of people from the standpoint of we're going to scare these people and we're going to get them where they're looking at us and paying attention. No, they're going in and cleaning out and there's some disruption with all the rats that they are, the low-level rats that they're cleaning, and mm -hmm. that's creating some of that 
but it wasn't to just scare the crap out of people and make you pay attention that way. It's an operation. It's going to clean out some stuff. Yeah, there's going to be some tragedies. There's going to be some disruption. There's going to be some questions. But when he says we have it all, we call them all. You either got to listen to him or not. And you got to trust him or not. And I don't know. It's just like the same as your team. You know, if, if you're a, a, a fan of something, they get their butts handed to them like Alabama did last weekend by an unranked opponent that, that, that ain't beat them in 40 years. You either jump ship or you go, you know what, it's just one game. You just – it is what it is. It's just a game, right? Mm-hmm. So with this, you don't let your emotions get in the way of one little moment and sliver of history because that right there shows an era. That's, that's a 45 that has an era. 46 has an era, and 47 is going to have one. Wow. I mean, you pretty much summated a lot of stuff in there as you typically do, Derek, and we, we greatly appreciate that. And that's, as you know, one of the things that we work really hard, <clears throat> we don't control, obviously, what other people say or don't say on their podcast, and we, we don't want to. We just use this as a place of, of God's peace and self-governance and also to bring calm and clarity, and it's, it's great colleagues and patriots like you that help us to achieve that. So we're, we're very aligned with that same purpose. Um, one of the last questions I want to ask you about today, since you cover, as, as you always typically do, a wide net within a certain uh, context of the conversation, you cover a lot of bases. So uh, th- we always kind of touch a little bit on the financial. You know that we're going through the, uh, the godly wealth transfer right now. We see Iraq is getting ready to return to the international stage. We've got BRICS coming up in two weeks. Um, this has smacks of a little bit of, of militarist, militaristic and also financial intertwined, as you'll appreciate. And that is the um, prophecy of Kim Clement with respect to the secret nuclear power plants of Iran that we know are about to be attacked. We had Prime Minister Bennett come on you know, fake news last week on CNN and publicly announced that they were going to do this. And so uh, I just wanted to get your take on that. Do you, have a, do you have an idea when you think that might happen? What does that mean for you know, oil prices in the short term as they hit the power plants and the oil fields, respectively? Oh, well, I think it'll be before November the 5th, if I had to guess, just because of, Mm -hmm. you know, they're going to make it look like everything happened under, uh, quote unquote, Biden, which is part of the takedown of the deep state. Um, So, you know, and we, you know, we could, you could kind of see that and feel that in a different manner. And, now, I may be wrong, but of course, it still could be before January the 20th, because that's the visual day that people see uh, the, the new president. But, um, you know, the thing is, too, though, is that I don't know, you know, like that that's part of that. It's already in a in a uh, one in a publication by the army, which was November 2019, the Iran, uh, the Dumbs. Uh, the deep underground basis. They got all the underground facilities outlined in that. It talks about denial and deception, um, which all warfare is deception, ladies and gentlemen. If you, It just depends on who's in tro- control and who's in charge. So all warfare is based on deception anyways. Um, then you had Iran. It was, a, uh, it was January 2023 that there's a treasury.gov link website but the treasury.gov put out an article about Iran seeking to uh, assassinate and things like that. So it's already been put there that Iran and president Trump's the one that hammered Iran. When he first got in, he's like, no deal. The Obama deal was all trash. Yada, yada, yada. So see that started way back when, so you got to get, you know, I always tell people you got to go way back. President Trump started hammering all the three letter agencies in 2017. He hammered Iran. That's when he hammered all these people. Because that are that, those are your tie-ins to everything that linked together with the Bushes, the Clintons, and the Obamas, and all of them. I mean, it is, it, it, we can just keep going back. Now, mm-hmm. I think that some presidents will be exonerated, like Nixon and Reagan. I think some might be because you have a guy who gets in, doesn't know how deep the bat state is. And then it was Congress who's been in control since 1951 because they're the ones that put term limits on the president, but not themselves. So that means that they're the ones in control and they're the ones that were telling the president. So when you fast forward, that was whole, that's the whole mission here. See, that's part of that whole mission is to annihilate over there. Cause when you look at Israel, if you just look at Israel and I let Siggy 
Flicker and Roseanne and them talk about their culture because they're both Jewish. Uh, I try to stay away from it as much as possible from that angle. Mm -hmm. However, when you look at Israel and you do the map and show people that here's all your Arab nations that claim Israel is occupying their land, it, it looks like a, a little white speck on a black dog. Like it, it, there, that argument don't even make sense. All right. To the average person, but also the one that can critically or, you know, common sense thing. So, you know, I've got a friend who is fluent in Hebrew that I actually went viral for. He's the one I made the video for. I said, give me five minutes. He's fluent in Hebrew. And we've spoken multiple times. And I mean, you talking about, I, I have to work hard just like people do with me. I have to work hard with it. But he talks about the 12 tribes of Judah being scattered. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Iran, traditionally, if you go all the way back 50 years ago, maybe a little bit more than that now, uh, you know, that's when things really went downhill was right around 1966, 1967. Um, and so it's all biblical. It is all biblical. It is there. Now, what that looks like in Revelation to some people is completely different. People believe all different ways for that. But we are in that biblical moment where when President Trump declared Jerusalem capital, it was a jubilee year. It was a big jubilee year, especially if you go look at uh, Judah Ben Samuel of Regensburg. I, I may be pronouncing it wrong, but when you look at the timeline calendar of this rabbi from way back in 1300s, it's pinpoint accurate. And he never used dates as in October, January. He used Jubilees. And John Hagee's the best I've seen that outlines it, and then one other uh, rabbi. But that, that outline is to the T all the way up to 2017 in the Jubilee when President Trump did that. And it was unexpected. It wasn't like it was like real planned out. So all of this ties in. And then you annihilate the caliphate. You, he did that. So that was all big steps for that. So, you know, a lot of this has already kind of been done. I think most of it's just pre recorded and people are going to see it from that angle. Um, but, yeah, I right. when, when they made Kamala say we don't have any soldiers in any combat zones, we have so many soldiers in Iraq still. It's not even funny. Uh, so that right there can show you it's already been done. And it, but you got to know those things first. But it's already been done. But yeah, Iran has been the one. It's always chanted death to Israel and death to the U.S. They've said this for years, but they really amped it up when in visually with President Trump in 2017, 2018, 2019. And then people forget the young girl that was murdered there over there in Iran and their people started uprising. So that that showed you right there uh, the women started realizing how oppressed they've been with everything the men have made them do there. So a lot of that happened way back here. So what people are seeing now are just going to be the, the public disclosure of it. Uh, but I think they still do it with uh, Biden and, you know, for the people that think he's real to make it look like the whole world just crumbled on that kind of mindset. And then you flip over into the Renaissance period that President Trump talks about. And then time and history will outline what took place because, one, he deserves all the credit for that. Also, the generals around him, General Kellogg's one of them we know, and Paul Vallelay. There's a few of them we can name outright. Uh, McInerney, we know for fact, are a part of it that have may have been vocal. But there's a lot more who will they, – they deserve all the validation and exoneration – for what they've done for humanity in the world. Uh, so it will have a, a resolution, but it'll also have a public disclosure somewhere down the road. Mm -hmm. I just think it's going to trickle out. I think, I hope it don't, but I think it's going to trickle because it's so much stuff. I mean, it's just, everything's been cleaned out. Uh, but yeah, now I'm not the financial guy as far as like, Oh, when it when it's going to flip over and when this is going to do that and when that but uh but it is a reset uh, it is a reset um the guardian or the hill or one of those uh a few years back put out an article about uh what's the constitution say about federal debt i mean so they've been showing people what's coming um and it is and it's happening and 
but it's nothing to fear. You know, that's the other thing I, I'm trying to reemphasize the people. People are fearing. Should I? They ask me. I'm like, I don't talk about it. I'm like, no. I mean, don't don't fear. If this guy tells you to take your money out of the bank, take it out of the bank. He ain't said that yet. He ain't said. I ain't gonna say that. But you know, it's not that. People got to quit fearing, and you got to you got to be careful who you follow and who you listen to because it. It's like I always give credit where it's due, but Major Jim O'Connor is a major, as it sounds, from West Point, retired, uh, special operations. He was airborne. All right. He's now a good bishop. He's on the good side of things. And it's like he tells people, ladies and gentlemen, if it's not of love, power, and a sound mind, like the Bible tells you, then it, it, it ain't for you. All right. Now you got to, you got, now you got to separate the difference in a passionate retired veteran trying to shake and get your attention, but it, I still love you. That's just, and there's that one kid, they'll just go along with the thing, and be good. but some of them got to grab them and say, what do I got to do to get your attention? That's still love and trying to empower you to have a sound mind. So uh, it's, I know people hear me and they go, well, you're the one yelling. No, I'm not yelling in a bad way. I'm saying, hey, listen, like my dad used to say years ago, what do I got to do to get your attention, son? Yeah. Like that. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, we, we do mostly, the, as you know, Derek, the financial side of things. But what we try to do is marry it up with the geopolitical or the militaristic side, that you, which is one of your many specialties to find common threads for the audience, bring clarity once again. Um, I'm with you that I think our team's with you in the in aspect of it happening this year because, um, number one, let it fall on the deep state optically, right? So it makes sense. Number two, Iraq just put out in our telegram, people can look, uh, that they are having an uptick or a surge in population within Iraq pointing to the construction projects, the reforms, and bringing out the private sector, which is where the real rate is. And they've already said, as you know, that they're going to uh, drop the dollar basically before the end of the year. So that to us is a big tell. So taking what we have against what you have and, you know, merging them, I think is very, very promising. And I also agree with you that uh, the Trump administration is very, the, the Trump fam, the team is very thoughtful in the way that they disseminate information to the public, wanting it to be a, a slow and systematic rollout so as not to have, you know, harm or cognitive dissonance or, or, you know, some people would like it to go faster, but people have to realize it's the whole of society. It's not just the awakened contingency of our movement, if you will. I want to read something to you before we have the last question, which has just came out today on the general. George Soros has quietly transferred several properties from his real estate portfolio to one of his most trusted advisors, Judy Bloom of Soros Fund Management, with a total of seven number completions seven properties transferred to her so far, thus far. So there's a, another tell. <laughs> I mean, absolutely. And I mean, it's just, I, I had the link and it still works. Ironically, sometimes you'll have a link to sold it don't work. Uh, but I put that post up not long ago about uh, Zuckerberg. I mean, he had dumped $350 million within like six months, way back 2021. That's that executive order right there. 13959 with a national emergency by President Trump, which SEC.gov has like 3,000 tabs, 3,000 pages of names that are assets for frozen companies, organizations. Oh, the old fact that's list. What, yeah. And that's what that is, ladies and gentlemen, right there is nothing but that. And, you know, that's uh, like the Warren Buff. I mean, there's so many, there's been so many big names. Uh, but the ones that should shop people, the names you never heard of that were just as involved. Uh, but there are the ones that the big names like that, but that is, that's a telltale of, uh, we got you and, you know, um, adios. Sure. Oh, God, I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Adios. I mean, that's all I said. Yeah, no, I love it. Bye con Dios. Um, one last quick question just to mop up everything. And I, I think this is to give people sort of, a, again, confirmation, completion, reassurance, whatever you like. So we know that this is not the real Biden, obviously. And, and you and I discussed this last time that we're not seeing the real Trump yet either with respect to the assassination attempts. We believe that there's going to be one more uh, this month. And obviously, we know Trump knows that and has anticipated, the team's anticipated it against that. Do you have a feeling that that might be 
closer to the very end of the month before the if the elections, if we have one, to try to as a wake up operation? How, how do you see that playing out? Uh, maybe and maybe not. Uh, what's funny is when you judge the climate of people and how they're taken to it. Uh, it seems like the one September the 16th, if you're on the Special Operations Command and you're sitting up there and you're, you know, you're seeing how your plan unfolded, you know, the first one, obviously, yeah, it got people. It got the Republicans, the Patriots, but the liberals, see, what people got to realize is this is also military don't work on a partisan. It's, it's just not, and it's not even bipartisan because they don't even talk like that. We don't, we don't talk like this. It's just humanity liberation, clean out of evil, uh, tyranny, terrorists, things like that. And so when people look at just in the naked eye, yeah, conservatives, Republicans, the first one, oh, you know, oh, my God, they try to. And then your liberals were over there. That that first one really, like, humbled that, that the, the low-level hanging fruit, as I call it, the average person liberal they kind of sat back kind of like you know they're not they like, they weren't real vocal the only thing they said was stuff like you know violence has no part in america like that then the second one republicans were like oh my god when are they gonna but because it was at the golf course not at a rally that kind of was subtle in another kind of manner it was split with the republicans then the conservatives but the liberals are all, oh that's a publicity stunt then now we're in publicity Two like that, and so, and I'm the guy sitting over there going, "You guys are in a special operation. It's in the special operations command assassination, comma, which means that solo as itself separation, comma, forming public opinion. Well, it did that. All right. It don't matter if it divided. It don't matter. It it formed the public opinion. It got people engaged. Got people's attention." And then advocated a national cause, which it did. It's national, it's not state, it's nothing like that. And then also the forming the 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 opinion, but basically the uh, it's destroying the established institutions, which that's what it did. You know, everybody started saying about Secret Service and FBI and how did they not know and this and that and other. And I was scrounging around on the internet the other evening. It's like. 1 or 2 a.m., that's my evening for people. Uh, in case you wonder, that's my what I, my definition of the evening is like 1 or 2 a.m. And, uh, and I was scrounging around. And on page about 5 or 6 of Google, you had to know what you're looking for because the title of it is not a title. Everybody knows you go to Google and you see the title, a little blue URL you click on. It says, oh, you know, Alabama versus this. or So it's a, you know, Walmart, da, 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 or this, that, that, whatever it is. This one don't have a title. It's got a long, long, long number and some abbreviation, like some acronym letters. That's it. Clicked on it. March 24th, tw I mean, excuse me, March 19th, 2024. Donald J. Trump, petitioner versus United States, respondent. It's Donald John Trump filing a United States Supreme Court lawsuit and he's got three of his executives in there. General Kellogg, one of them. And then you go read the thing, and it's about executive orders and assassinations and how the military can't order murder, but also presidents cannot order, I mean, so assassinations. So what that's alluding to is that they're going to pin it on either Obama or Biden or somebody that people think has been president, something's going to come out of that as that what they use the military to order against President Trump is the way it reads. So it's got a pretty good, but that right there, the March 19th, 2024, before July 13th and before September shows, ladies and gentlemen, it's all special operations because that little ass assassination I'm talking about is in that same diagram of the special operations command and there's evidence around it. So I don't know if the climate of people, and that's what Dr. Jan and people work with, is the, the climate of what people are receiving and what there aren't. I don't know if a number one even 
same thing. However, with it being in Iran, it depends on how big they make it. Like if they try to shoot this aircraft out of the sky with a military jet, now that might be something that would get people's attention because that would bring in the language of that is that, uh, that uh, Supreme Court doc talking about using the military. And then also the talk was that Iran was, was targeting his jet. So if it's something like that, that could scare the ever living crap out of people. Um, you know, make it look like a plane has a, a crash landing. I mean, I don't know. You, I think outside the box, but that's the only way I think it could do that. And I don't know if it, it if they if they do it, then obviously there's going to be a reason and a necessary something on the back side to show why they did it that way. But if they don't, I wouldn't be surprised. If, I would be surprised if they didn't because I don't think the climate of people now care. I think people are are really Republicans and conservatives are exhausted. Liberals. They look like they're aggressive from the standpoint they're going to do something, but a lot of them are just all talk because a lot of them don't even vote, ironically. Uh, so, you know, a lot do. But I think when you co combine the, the exhaustion and then the all talk, the barks, all the bark, and it ain't the bark, it's the bite, ladies and gentlemen. So, you know, I think when you combine those, I think most liberals think it's all publicity stuff. And I think most conservatives and everybody are exhausted and they know he's protected, he survived, he's not, I, I don't know, you know, I just, I don't, I don't, but that's me. If they do, it's part of that. If they don't, that don't go away. Uh, but it could be that. It could be the reason why they go after Iran or, or per se, you know, that could be that with the people. Uh, so I don't know. There's a lot of ways to look at it. Cause it's all yeah. speculation. Sure. Well, I appreciate it. Well, Derek, as always, love having you. Uh, where can people find your work? And last thoughts for the audience, as always. Well, yeah, I mean, probably the easiest way to find all my official pages, because uh, there's there's two or three fake accounts that have 40 and 70,000 followers, and it's not me at all. So there's nothing we can do about it. Um, so the best way is probably my link tree. So L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E -E backslash 1776 nation. That'll bring up all my links. Um, and then, it'll, then you get to pick whichever site you want to go to, Facebook, Truth, whatever. Um, I mean, my last words right now, once again, are just, I mean, I'm, when people are exhausted, I'm, I'm right there with you in a different manner, but I'm, I'm always energized. But that right there is the only thing that matters. Is that dash right there in the middle? that dash means continuous it means through it means i never went away i didn't go away i didn't have to go away and i didn't take a deal i didn't forget about you whatever words you've heard from negative or people don't know it's polar wrong polar opposite that dash means continuous and when he says the best is yet to come we have it all we call them all all drain that swamp you're witnessing that that's what the dash means it means it was going to be awesome because everybody was like, wow, this right here, the ups and the downs, this right here is a renaissance. And then also what he said, we're going to do is celebrate every single day from Memorial Day to our 250th birthday and our 250th birthday for a year again every single day. <laughs> to get everybody in this nation on the left or whatever polls, wherever you're sitting, to get your neighbors and your family and your friends who have ostracized you ridiculed you uh you know maybe divorced you whatever whatever pains you've been through through covid all the stuff you've been through to get all of that negative stuff to flip over and go yeah we're going to celebrate every single day because it's not a partisan thing mm -mm. this is the, so to get that opposite of you celebrate with all of us every single day he said every single day that's a pretty confident person to say that we're all going to be celebrating every single day up till our birthday. And then also every single day after that for a year, that's a pretty confident person. So that tells you that there's more people involved. I tell people, don't worry about who's good and who's bad because it's a military operation. You don't know that special forces and special operations require actors, good and bad. The bad that looks like they're bad, but they're actually good. They're playing a part, right. which means there's going to be a, revelation at the end of that so 
that celebratory moment means there's going to be a revelation. You're going to know the place because they got to exonerate President Trump. So that tells you you're going to know what took place. And then what's going to end up happening is I hope happens not for my sake, not me, myself, and I, but I do hope that people realize who also led you through the wilderness during the time where it mattered the most because in the in the glory phases, you, you're going to be in the glory phase. But always remember who toted the weight. That's why it's very important because moving forward, we got to maintain and sustain what we went through all these years. And you're going to want people like me and John and different people who had good motives and good heart and good interest the whole time and helps you with the real truth. Because like Johnny Cash, Johnny Cash wrote a song in 1971, What is Truth? I mean, think about the 70s. Most people thought the 70s were pretty good years, the 60s, 70s, 80s, nothing like now. So if you got a song back then, I know truth has been diluted, fat's been diluted, but you either trust it or you don't. And what we bring or what I bring, especially, I'll speak for myself because I ain't trying to throw someone under the bus or whatever, good or bad. I'll speak for myself. What I bring to the table, that right there is full explanation. So it's either all true or we're all hogwash. And you get to decide that. But if, if I'm hogwash, then that's hogwash. Well said. And, and, and what a heck of a jubilee year it'll be per Leviticus 25, 9 to 11, 12. So uh, look, a lot to look forward to. Derek Johnson, thank you for being here as always. Good, sir. Appreciate you. And we look forward to having you on uh, in the not too distant future. Take care for now. God bless.